I recently came across an article titled The Best Telescopes for Astrophotography in 2023. And you know I couldn't help my monkey brain but click on that article. And as somebody who does you know, astrophotography and works with telescopes for a living, I have to say these recommendations absolutely suck. They are atrocious recommendations. It baffles me that this is a top Google search result. You know, when I Googled best telescopes for astrophotography, this was, you know, one of the top search results that came up and it made me really sad to read through some of these recommendations. And it's not just because it's full of bad information, it's because it's at the top of Google or near the top of Google. And with the title best telescopes for astrophotography, beginners are going to search that term, find this article and see that it's from a website called Digital Camera World and make them think, oh, this is a reputable website because this is what they do. They're all about cameras and this is an article about astrophotography. So I'm going to take the recommendations and their advice. <sighs> and that makes me sad. We don't want people to get discouraged about this hobby, but we also want to make sure that they get the right information. So, you know, I wanted to share this article and go through it with you guys because, man, some of these recommendations and some of the advice and just some of the wording they give is laughable. It's almost like they, you know, typed in their prompt into chat GPT and just copy pasted some of the text because some of it is just <laughs> outright wrong. Look, it just goes to show that just because something's near the top or at the top of your Google search results doesn't mean it is actually good advice or correct advice. And before we dive into this article, you may even come across some people who have taken photos of space with these telescopes and maybe got some decent results. But look, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Just because someone loaded the game Doom on a pregnancy test doesn't mean you should play Doom on a pregnancy test. Just because you can take a photo of the moon with a Game Boy doesn't mean you should take a photo of the moon with a Game Boy. <laughs> the best telescopes for astrophotography in 2023. So the first result here is going to be a very controversial result. It's the Unistellar EV telescope. Now, astrophotography purists will tell you that, no, this is not a good astrophotography telescope. And I will actually argue that this is one of the choices that this article makes that is a pass. I'm not going to say it should be top 10. It's definitely not number one. I don't think it's a top 10 telescope for astrophotography. But can you do astrophotography with it? Of course. Yes, you can. I'm giving it a pass. You know what? You can hate me for saying it, but this is actually, I'm, I'm letting this one slide. You know, I would actually equate this to maybe someone asking, what's the best editing software for editing photos? And iPhones have a auto enhance button. It's like saying the auto enhance button on iPhones is the best photo editing software out there. Is it the best? No, but can it actually do it? Yes. So can this telescope take astro photos and do a pretty good job? Yes, it can. Is it the best? No. But anyways, I'm giving this one a pass. So number one is actually not bad, but then then we get into the, the meat and potatoes of this article. Number two, the Celestron Astromaster 130. This was such a disappointment to see on this article. It was so... I, I I'm just blown away that they actually have this here. Anyone who's ever tried to, you know, put a DSLR camera on this thing knows that you're just you're not going to be able to reach focus. This thing is not good for astrophotography, let alone deep space. And it has it has a motor drive, sure, okay, but man, this is just a horrible telescope for astrophotography. And look at this. They even claim the best telescope for astrophotography and stargazing overall. Sure, stargazing, yes, this is a pretty good telescope for stargazing. But if you're beginning astrophotography and you get this telescope to take photos of deep space or uh, anything, man, you're going to be sorely disappointed. This is, this is a rough choice here. And look at this, Digital Camera World Recommended. Man, they, they are just, they're going all out for you. They really want you to click their links and, and buy this so they can get their affiliate links and, and get a payout. It's not, not a good telescope for astrophotography. Look at this. Reasons to buy. Reasons to buy. Right here. Good for long exposure astrophotography. No, it is not. You are going to hate your life if you try to use this thing for astrophotography. I would equate this to a series called the Celestron Power Seeker Telescope. There's an entire subreddit online called don't buy a power seeker and i would say this should fall under that category don't buy an astromaster 
especially if you're doing it for astrophotography. Now, here we go. This is actually a really good telescope. This, the, the 5SE is a fantastic telescope if you're looking through it. And I've seen people take, you know, great planetary photos with the, the next star series, but man, you, you got to read this. L look what they put here. You got, you got to see what they put in this. Given its focal ratio of F10, the next star SE is a fast telescope. So it's best suited to lunar and planetary. F10 is not fast. All you astrophotographers are probably cringing at that statement right now. F10 is damn slow. It's, it's not good. So this already shows you that whoever was writing this is not, is not really in tune with, with astrophotography. Look at this. Celestron Star Sense Explorer. A great all-arounder for basic astrophotography. What is basic astrophotography? I don't know what they mean by basic astrophotography. But look, excellent price. Look at look at these justifications that they have for this telescope. Excellent price, beginner friendly. Sure, these are great. I mean, dude, this is a great telescope if you want to look through it. But oh my god, great all arounder for basic astrophotography. Like, what does this mean? What what does only allows for basic astrophotography mean? I don't I don't understand that. And then if you actually read the description here, all it really talks about is eyepieces and using slow motion controls. Like we're not using eyepieces, we're using a camera. I mean, come on guys, come on. This, <laughs> this recommendation, right? <laughs> I can't even talk. This recommendation here is one that just made me laugh. <sighs> Great choice for Canon DSLR users. Dude, this is a tabletop telescope. This telescope sits on a tabletop. It's tiny, it's small. First, if you put a Canon DSLR camera on this thing, it's gonna fall off the table from the weight of your camera and then fall, break your camera and break your telescope. And now you're at a telescope and a camera and you're gonna hate astrophotography. You're gonna hate photography and you're just gonna give up on all of it. This is a hor, I mean, this statement right here just, just makes me cringe. Ugh, I hate it. But then if you actually try to put a camera on this telescope, you're never ever going to see anything. Everything's going to be blurry. This telescope cannot be used for astrophotography. You could put an iPhone up to the eyepiece. Sure, you could do that with any telescope. But man, putting a Canon DSLR camera on this telescope, I I don't know what else to say other than this is just, just flat out wrong. Now here is the first option that I actually look at and go, oh, Hey, they actually put a decent telescope on here. The, uh, the this Maxitov Cassegrain telescope, fantastic for planetary, fantastic for planetary, which is great. But then again, you start reading the description, and you can just tell that they don't really know what they're talking about. It says this this is capable of giving fair views of a selection of bright nebula and galaxies, particularly those that take up a larger section of the sky. That is the complete opposite of what this can do. This telescope here is like an F15 telescope, which means you're going to have an extremely narrow field of view. And yet they're telling the user, the person who's looking to buy this, that, oh, you're going to see the Andromeda galaxy. You're going to see the Orion Nebula. No, you're going to see a tiny little piece of those deep sky objects. Again, just baffling the, the amount of bad information in this article. <laughs> and then we get to the Star Travel 120 from Skywatcher. Again, a great telescope, especially, you know, for looking at the moon and planets. This is a really nice telescope. But when we're talking about taking photos, mm -mm, not good. The mount is a manual mount. Look, it even has the little like slow motion controls that you turn to actually move it. It's all manual. But look at this. You could tell they didn't even they didn't even read about this telescope they just blurted out some some information <laughs> look what they have here reasons to buy tracking mount with ios android wi-fi control dude this is a manually controlled telescope there are absolutely no electronics on here I, lots of advanced features dude they didn't <laughs> they didn't even read the description of this thing <laughs> i just oh i just have to laugh at it it's just it's laughable how how bad this is then we have the Evo Star 120. When I worked in the telescope industry, a, a lot of people actually were were putting cameras on this telescope and getting images. So not too far off. This is actually good. But then you read this. A telescope such as this could, could provide a lifetime of observing pleasure. This is an article about astrophotography. 
look, I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to rank really high on Google so their article can come up near the top. So when beginners click this link, they'll click their affiliate links and buy the products. But this just goes to show that they 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 really did not care about the customers. They did not care about their readers when they wrote this article because this is just such bad advice. Advice. This is such bad advice. All right, the next one is the Stellina. I'm just going to I'm just going to say the same thing I would about the EV scope. I give this one a pass. So that's this list here. This list is just chock full of terrible information, laughable information. Astrophotographers should be cringing that this is one of the top Google search results and shame on you digital <laughs> digital camera world for putting out this article and steering a lot of people in just not even a bad direction but a horrible direction for wanting to get people into astrophotography. Look, I live for getting people into this hobby because I find it so fun and amazing and knowing that there are people out there who are taking this advice, you know, taking the advice of of articles like this and then knowing that they're going out and trying astrophotography and struggling with it and buying this equipment, spending their money on it, buying this equipment like a like a, <laughs> a Celestron Inspire and trying to do all different types of astrophotography. Knowing that they're struggling, knowing that they're going to have a hard time, it might make them just give up on it and not want to continue doing it. And to me, that's a shame because we want people to be successful. We want people to have fun with this. And this is just going to make sure that people don't have fun with it. It's going to make sure that people aren't successful with it. And so articles like this just make me sad. So I started clicking around because we're not done. We're not done. I started looking around. And guess what? On still on the first page of Google, on my search results, this article came up. The 10 best telescopes for astrophotography. And lo and behold, what's at the top? The Celestron Astromaster. It makes a return. Look, this article is best telescopes for astrophotography. And they're talking about eyepieces and magnification. Look at this. The 8SE. The Orion 130SE. Dude, these are just horrible recommendations. Oh my gosh. It makes me sad to see this. Anyways, that's all I wanted to talk about. This is terrible. We can't let this happen. Help your your beginners out. Be kind to them. Don't whatever you do, don't don't make fun of beginners who bought these telescopes. We we got to help them out. We got to educate them. We got to make sure that they make the right decisions because we want more people in this hobby. We want more people to to enjoy sharing the night sky and enjoy their time under the stars. So, if they did make the mistake of buying one of these telescopes based on these recommendations, all we can do is just try and guide them and, and put a little more effort into making sure that we help them get the best experience and make sure we help them with the best recommendations for whatever uh, their budget is. So anyways, that's all I wanted to talk about. We'll see you guys.